Felix back. Have you got an even tinier machine? We've taken a look at Intel and we've taken a look at relatively high end Radeon with the 680M, but now it's time to take a look at a 5800H based system. Why? Because, well, it, it costs less. B-Link is kind of a standout in these small form factor maker machines, especially when compared with the Intel NUC, because usually the B-Link system will have a better or smarter configuration in terms of USB ports and how they've done the cooling or how they've structured the case. And I really liked the 680M based B-Link machine as well. So I thought I would take a look at the lesser expensive 5800H. 16 gigabytes and 500 gigs of storage is what our base configuration here has. It is only a single one gigabit NIC, but again, you know, if this is for your grandma's machine or a guest room computer, or even just running a TV that's going to graph the status of things, you know you can plug Greylog and Grafana into OpenSense and get a really cool nifty dashboard that's open source on GitHub. And you don't need much of a computer to do that. You could just plug it in. You could, you could build a war room. It's a lot of fun. I do really like how these are basically becoming super insanely high end devices for whatever you want to do. <laughs> From souped up Chromecast to grandma's computer. Now sometimes you can buy these kinds of machines as a bare bones kit. That just means you add your own memory and storage. This thing will support 32 gigabytes of memory, no problem, but even if you get the bare bones kit, it's gonna come with the Visa slash wall mount metal bracket. It's gonna come with a lovely power brick. Now this is a much smaller power brick, probably owing to the more modest power requirements. We've got our Visa mount HDMI cable as well as our regular length HDMI cable. Cute little power cord. And some Visa mount screws that we're trying to escape. Thank you for your choice. Due to the system boot process, if you cannot log into your personal account, please turn off the Wi-Fi and LAN, select the skip option, and then log into your personal account in the system. Please peel off this film before using. Good job, B-Link. Microsoft, if anybody from Microsoft is watching, your choices about setting up Windows 11 are awful and require companies like B-Link to add a notice like that to their products because no one debugs the Windows installation process. Nothing to do with B-Link, it's really awesome. By the way, Linux on this thing, it's pretty awesome. At the rear, we've got dual HDMI. Yes, that is full HDMI. You wanna run 4K 60, no problem. We've got a USB 3, five gigabit port, and a USB 2 port, as well as our one gig LAN, a DC input jack. Like other models, this exhausts air out the back and has air venting on the top and sides. There are four normal Phillips screws on the bottom that allow you to remove the bottom to replace the storage and memory. At the front for I.O. we have two USB 5 gigabit ports, a type C port, and our combination headphone microphone port, a power button, and a tiny recessed clear CMOS button. Now in case you're not familiar, the 5800H is kind of a mobile product. Normally you find these in laptops, so it kind of makes sense that our power brick is 65 watts, even given that we can do some power delivery and some charging with our USB setup that we have here. Now, even though our USB-C port does support DisplayPort Alt mode, as we tested, we're not gonna get PCIe tunneling or anything really a lot more advanced than that. I'm using it to connect to uh, the keyboard, which has a built-in hub, which works pretty well. When we're running Geekbench, as well as ADA64, it gives us a little bit more insight, not just into the specs on paper, but also how the system will perform. For long-term benchmarks, I use Cinebench and I let it run for a little while. Uh, letting Cinebench run for about 20 or 30 minutes, you will hear the cooling fan in this. And it does have a little bit of a, of a high pitch to it. It's not uh, just the whirring, rushing sound. But the good news is most of the time under normal usage scenarios, I can't even tell that the fan is on. Even over a completely silent room, sitting this far away from it, I can't hear anything. And usually when I put it behind the monitor is when it's like, okay, I can hear it here a little bit. And then I put it behind the monitor and it's like, okay, I can't hear it anymore. But with this thing mounted on the wall or behind a monitor, even running that full tilt center bench, it's not really super loud if you have literally anything else. In my case, running the air conditioner today because it's in the 80s. It's so warm, weirdly. It's weirdly warm all of a sudden. Uh, I can't hear this. I can't hear the fan even in its loud mode over the air conditioner, so. Our memory configuration is dual channel DDR4 3200. The command rate is nothing really special to write home about, 22, 22, 22. It's not fast, DDR4-3200. Our latency is about 88 nanoseconds, so not bad overall. 
B-Link does give us some options to tune this in the BIOS, but again, if you're buying this, you probably want it to be more appliance-like. You don't care, you just want to plug it in and go, and it definitely does that. And with the Cezanne APU family, you may remember, that's Vega built-in graphics. So it's good enough for basic stuff, it's productivity stuff. You can drive three monitors with it, two HDMI and one DisplayPort alt mode through your USB-C port, but it's Vega. It's an older platform. If you're looking for something that could play games like Dota, a little bit of Stellaris even at 1080p, reasonable-ish frame rates, you're gonna probably wanna look at that Sur Pro with a 680M. That's a much better iGPU. But make no mistake, for productivity tasks, Vega is fine. If you just need to run two or three displays with this, Vega will do everything you need. If you just need some digital signage with the aforementioned Grafana, perfect. Technically, this APU is a 45 watt APU, which means that it can use, you know, a little bit more than 45 watts. Our 65 watt power brick selection makes sense. However, with the BIOS configuration on this, it was really tough to get the system to consume more than about 40 watts, 45 watts at the wall. And the cooling here is not such that you'll want to be doing overclocking or anything else. I mean, the, the maximum you can get from the power brick is 65 watts, and really you don't want it to be running more than 85, 90% of that any given time because that'll shorten the life of the power components. That's usually the case, that's a rule of thumb. I don't know that to be true here. Sometimes the power bricks are over spec so that they can deliver burst power beyond their rated wattage. That might be the case here, I'm just letting you know. Our Geekbench 6 scores, 1129 for single core, 6315 for multi-core. Now keep in mind that's Geekbench 6. It doesn't necessarily directly compare to older versions of Geekbench. That is a pretty respectable score. I mean, but this is an older APU, keep in mind. Again, perfectly viable for office productivity, checking email, doing document creation, 16 gigabytes of memory is plenty. You might want to upgrade to 32 gigabytes. That's the easiest upgrade to make the system feel a lot snappier if you want to do that. But again, low cost machine, very competent, very capable. If you're rocking something like an 8th gen Intel, maybe even a 9th gen Intel and like a small form factor business class machine, got sad news. This thing is probably 35, 40% faster. It'll feel 100 plus percent faster if you don't have high speed storage, if you're still on spinning rust because they got the cheapest i3 they possibly could six years ago. This is going to run circles around it. And it's so inexpensive that it's like, hey, you could just get this and migrate all your data and be in a completely different world. In, in the first week, the time saved waiting on an old slow computer would pay for this thing. Well, that's been a quick look at the B-Link Sur series, Ryzen 7, it's the 5 series, but it's the Ryzen 7 5800H from B-Link. Again, thanks B-Link for sending this over so I could take a look at it. It's a Ryzen 5800H. It performs like a Ryzen 5800H at the 45 watt TDP power limit, but in a small form factor configuration. It might have been nice to have a couple of more USB ports, but hey, it ain't bad. It's pretty darn good, in fact. I feel like most people are probably gonna be using both the front and rear USB ports, or you're gonna be using a wireless keyboard and mouse. Even if you're using a wireless keyboard and mouse receiver in the rear USB 2 port, it's like, ah, oh, there's never enough USB ports. Maybe your monitor has some USB ports or a built-in USB hub or something like that. Maybe you've got a, a document scanner and some other things like that. I mean, you do have a total of four type A ports, one USB 2, three, three, five gigabit, but hey, it's not bad. Around here, I've got a special task for it. There's a GitHub project that is a sort of a dashboard, I guess you'd call it, for OpenSense. Check it out. Look at these cool graphs. It's showing stuff that's going on with your firewall. How awesome would it be to have in your server closet or your war room or just in the hallway when people are walking by go to the bathroom, a dashboard showing a picture of the globe and where everybody's connecting to your firewall and everything like that. This appliance could do it. Just run the software, connect it to a couple of uh, 4K monitors, and you're done. It's that inexpensive and that flexible. Fun times. I'm Little This Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.